Hi everybody, I'm here today with Jane Ellison who has agreed to talk a little bit about what it's like to be an infant and early childhood mental health practitioner. I am a marriage and family therapist, so I do have um, licensure in marriage and family therapy at this point. But I started my career really working with really little kids, so okay. birth to five, yep. and then um, and their families, mm -hmm. so birth to five and their families, in a variety of different places. So early childhood family education, child care, preschool, um, et cetera. And then I got licensure in um, parent education and okay. did a lot of work with parents and moved from working with um, just a, a, a range of parents mm -hmm. to eventually working with parents who had some special needs. Mm -hmm. So whether it was because they had children with special needs or they themselves were uh, victims of, of domestic violence mm -hmm. or um, had had their own growing up experience had not been positive and they wanted to do things different for their children. There were a number of different reasons. Um, also some child abuse and um, neglect prevention programs, etc. So in that work, um, eventually I, it felt like it would be very helpful to also get um, some mental health training and that's when I got my marriage and family therapy licensure. So um, that's kind of been my work trajectory yeah, yeah. and all the way through I've always known that my focus area is the really little ones and mm -hmm. in particular birth to three. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I talk about how with really little children that they are both the most vulnerable mm -hmm. and the most resilient because people often mm -hmm. say aren't little kids resilient and they are. There's some things about little kids that just makes them very resilient but they also are the most vulnerable. They're the most vulnerable and resilient for the same reason which is their brain is developing during that time. Right. So brain development can be impacted and that can be very negative. We don't want that if it's a negative impact. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can get things back on track. Right. And so I think one of the most powerful things obviously is just getting to see that happen yeah. and watching little ones who just look like a mess because of things in their lives, things how they've been, et cetera, pull together and you know, development is on your side. Yeah. You're moving forward and suddenly, oh my gosh, you are doing so well. It's just such a, I mean, that's just awesome. And getting to see the parents feel so good about that as well. You kind of get that immediate return on investment. You, you like see it right away. You can watch it right in yeah, front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Yeah. So do you have any fun, quirky stories of working with kids and families that are you know, little, little fun tidbits? <laughs> well, one thing that I love is that um, the way, because we can't sit them down and ask them, you know, to tell us their troubles and et cetera, that we have to learn it through play. And so actually what is, what I find just um, a thrill is when you open up the possibility for a child to show you what's on their mind and then they show you what's on their mind. So for example, one time um, the parent and I were really concerned about a really traumatic experience that this child had had. And so, um, Introducing to this child who was um, just two, so a really little one, um, that that was something that we knew had happened and that they might be worried about it. And then the child goes over and starts to play about potty training. And it's kind of like, oh, so mom, are you also potty training? She's like, yeah, we have been, and it's been really a struggle. It's kind of like, oh, that's what's on that child's mind right now. Forget that other trauma. They're doing okay with that one, but this potty training thing is not going so great. <laughs> so that was a, that was a, an interesting moment, but I just love those moments where I go, oh, that's what you're thinking that's about. That's what you're thinking. Yeah. Well, and it's, it, I think it's hard being an adult sometimes because we sort of impose yes. what I think kids should be worried about. Yes. And that's the time. That's Something not even completely close to what they're worried about. Exactly. <laughs> And they, they, their perception of things is still completely different. Right. So we may think the scary thing was one thing, mm -hmm. and what they think the scary thing was, was that mom wasn't in the room with them at that time. Yeah. And so those separations between them and their primary caregivers are really key and, and in their minds. Yeah. And we might forget that. I might forget that that's yeah. actually maybe the most important the part. The most important part, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jane, for yeah. sharing your time and expertise with us today. Uh, if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.